Hi, in our previous video we talked about uh, how to file GSTR1. In this video we will be talking about how to deal with GSTR2. GSTR2 essentially refers to your purchase related data and this is the data that your suppliers enter in the GSTR1 and once they enter the data in the GSTR1 by 10th then after 10th it will start reflecting in your GSTR2A. So basically if I purchase something from supplier A and he files his GSTR1 then in my GSTR2 that data will be shown. So let me just get started with the initial components of GSTR2. So it will primarily include your purchases, your advances, debit credit notes, uh, HSN, uh, ITC reversal mismatches, imports and ISD, TDS and TCS. Some of these fields may not be applicable to all of you. For example, ISD, TDS, TCS, they are only applicable to a very few players. So what is most important here is the purchases part. And in purchases part, essentially, it's it's mainly the B2B purchases, purchases which have been uh, done from a supplier who has a GSTIN. So that's what needs to be kind of uh, entered here. Now, let's assume that there was no data on the screen. So this is the screen is basically your purchase register. Now what you can do essentially is you can either enter the data on your own uh, on the screen itself or you can also import the data from your ERP or Excel systems that's also can be done so there are multiple approaches through which you can uh, file your GSTR2 now let me show you the easiest approach so let's say that you're a very small supplier or a very small uh, purchaser and you have 10 to 15 invoices so in that case it will make sense that you import your supplier data or the data that your suppliers have entered on your name you fetch the data from the government so you'll see all the invoices here you can then say that you want to use this data so you see all the data is here so all the data has been provided by your supplier now what you can do is you can basically keep your purchase register besides you and go one by one so for example for this specific invoice if you think that the value was uh, lesser so you can reduce the value if you think that this invoice wasn't there in your record so you can reject this invoice Similarly, you can approve the invoices. So if you think that uh, there is some invoices that are missing, you can also add the invoices directly onto the system. So I can add an invoice here. You can add the invoice number. I can add the date. So all those details can be added here. Now, at the end you will see that I can I also need to add the eligibility part either whether it's eligible under input goods input services and I also need to enter the ITC claimed so once I'm done I can just save and I can file this return now this was assuming a very simplistic case wherein we only have like 10 15 or at max 20 invoices and we manually reconcile the invoices and file the return Let's say that you're a larger company and you have 500 invoices. Now, checking the data one by one for these 500 invoices will be extremely cumbersome. So here is what you can do. You can import your purchase register, which can be uh, in form of Excel or you can either type it on the screen itself. So let's say that we are importing your purchase file. So for uh, time sake, we have already purchased, uh, we have already prepared a purchase file. So this is the file that we prepared. Okay. And you can download the template from here by clicking this button. So let's say we want to use the file that we prepared. So we'll use this file. Now data from this file can, will be automatically imported here to our screen or to our system. So you see, in terms of status, everything has been added by you. And since this is your data, we have automatically marked this as approved. Now, this is something that you think is right. 
let's also get the data that your supplier has entered of the sales that he has made to you. So for that, you need to import your supplier data from here. So this is where you import your supplier data from. So let's say I import data from the government. So this is something that your supplier has entered. The moment you click the reconcile button, this picks up the data or the purchase register that was on the screen and reconciles it with this data, which is your supplier's data and shows you where are the errors. Now, if you see, this is the reconciled data wherein 40 records were found, 15 were matched and these were unmatched. Now, what we have do, done is we have intelligently kind of mapped your data with the supplier data and all the records that were matching, we have automatically approved that. Similarly, all the records that were added by you, also they have been approved. Now, only the records which were either mismatch or which were found in your supplier data but not found in your data have been marked as pending. Now, let's take an example of a mismatch invoice. So, for example, in this case, in this particular invoice, you see that the error is that the total value of 28% rate provided by your supplier is 98095 but your value for the 28 percent rate is 34,000. So you can either now recheck and say that you were wrong or the supplier was wrong. So in case you think that the supplier is right, so you can use his value which was 98095 here and do away with your value. Similarly here it's saying that your supplier value was 27466 but you have entered the value as 9520 so which means uh, if your value is incorrect you can change this value and uh, then you can also change the status so once you've you've satisfied that this invoice is correct as per you you can just uh, mention approved here there can be cases where you think that the invoice that has been provided by the supplier is not your invoice or it has been wrongly entered in your name so you can simply in terms of action reject that invoice so again the this action updation needs to be done for each and every invoice for the ones that uh, that were matched we have done it automatically for, but for the others you have to do it manually so once you are done you can just save the changes and you'll see that all these changes are now reflected on the final data. This is the final data that will be kind of submitted to the government. You can recheck it anytime you want to. You can just save this, come back, check whatever data you want to check and then update it whenever required. There's another feature that we provided with the system which is notify the sellers. Now against each of these GSTNs, we have also provided email IDs which you can do in the manage party section. Now the moment you click notify seller for all the GSTNs for which we have the email ID stored given by you, we will send them an email saying that look this was an invoice wherein there was a mismatch and we the the or we the, the purchaser has updated it so you should also update in your record. So this is for the records of the supplier as well. He'll, he'll receive an email. Uh, based on notifications. So this is your complete GSTR2. If you want to check for any errors, you can just validate the invoices and it will throw uh, any errors if there are any. So once everything has been validated and there are no errors, so for example in this case you can see that eligibility has not been filled. Now you need to fill in the eligibility. By default, uh, ITC claimed uh, is 100% in most cases. So you can just control C and copy paste control V uh, all the values as 100%. Similarly inputs are by default in most cases it's either input goods or in input services. Let's say it's, it was input goods. So you can ch choose uh, one of the options and then control C, uh, control V, copy paste till the end and all the fields as you can see will be updated. So this is like the final summary. So once you have prepared the final summary, you need to save the data. Now there is one more thing. In this specific case, we first 
imported your data and then we imported data from the government and this is the final output of the, the reconciliation that we did now if you want to again import your data you can do that and you can also in fact import data from the government uh, we won't stop you from doing that but it's advisable that you do reconciliation only once otherwise the more and more you reconcile the data the more uh, confusing it will get for you so this was i think all about uh, the gstr2 part coming out you now can also enter your advances here for this particular month and you can adjust your purchase related advances here similarly you can add any debit and credit notes if applicable in your case lastly you can also uh, provide the hs in summary itc reversal data <laughs> finally you need to file the gstr2 before uh, the deadline so you go to file button you uh, you enter the otp for the authentication then now is when the data will be saved on the government servers so once the data is saved on the government servers we will not file it we'll first fetch a summary from the government so that you can check the summary and after checking the summary which is this you can either choose to file via e sign or you can choose to file via dsc so we've already covered this part in our video for gstr1 and i won't cover it again so basically this is how you can file your gstr2 uh, so that's it for this video in our next video we'll be covering gstr1 and gstr3 thank you